Many moths and other insect species are known to be attracted to light. It's long been suspected that artificial light at night, also known as Allen, can have a negative impact on insect populations. Shame on you, Allen. So far, the evidence for this has been limited, but a new study published in August 2021 by Douglas Boys, Darren Evans, Richard Fox, Mark Parsons and Michael Pocock aims to shed some light, hopefully not at night, on this issue. Let's just have no Allens involved in this study. Damn it, Allen, you can't even contribute. By now, you've probably heard about the insect apocalypse, the claim that the world's insect populations are in major decline. The evidence for this claim is growing. Moths have proven to be a particularly important study animal for investigations into the effects of the insect declines. Moths are a particularly species-rich insect group that have had significant population declines reported. Moths are incredibly important for terrestrial ecosystems, probably far more important than many people realise. They are pollinators, prey for many animal species such as birds, bats, spiders and wasps, and moths are hosts for several parasitoids. So if moth populations decline, it can have substantial cascading consequences for their ecosystems. Artificial light at night, or Allen, is increasingly recognised as a threat to biodiversity and has been proposed as a driver of insect declines. But what's so bad about Allen? Night lighting has wide-ranging negative effects on insects and will affect them at all stages of their life cycle. Nocturnal insects may be less active in lit areas, they are easier to spot by their predators, and night lighting can disrupt their reproduction. Every time a new housing estate is built or a new road, that means more street lighting. And of course, less natural habitat, but that's not the topic of this video. Light pollution is increasing globally, and many studies have been done trying to evaluate the impact Alan has on insect populations. This particular study I want to talk about today was performed over three years in southern England. The researchers spent over 400 hours sampling caterpillars along roadsides, comparing habitat directly lit by established streetlights with carefully matched unlit habitat located nearby. They focused on caterpillars rather than adults because this gave the researchers a clearer understanding of the impacts of Allen at the population level. The abundance, or lack thereof, of the larval stage should demonstrate the effects of Allen on where insects live and develop. After all, the adults are attracted to light, so you might expect a higher number of adults in lit areas, and this would lead to biases when comparing lit and unlit areas. For this reason also, the researchers did not use light traps, which is a standard method of sampling moths. Instead, they used sweep netting of grass margins at night and hedgerow beating during the day. So what did the study find? The research shows that caterpillar abundance was substantially lower in habitat areas illuminated by streetlights. In hedgerows, caterpillar abundance was almost halved, with a 47% reduction in lit areas, and the grass mergers had a 33% reduction. Here is their results graph. The left-hand side contains the results for the abundance of caterpillars in hedgerows, and the right-hand side for grass margins. Each narrow bar represents a difference in abundance of caterpillars at individual sites. The lower down on the graph, the fewer caterpillars in the lit areas compared to the unlit areas. The thick bars represent the overall results from each group. You'll also notice there are different coloured bars. These represent the type of street lighting at the sample sites. The blue bars represent areas lit by more modern LED street lights. The yellow bars are from areas that were lit with HPS or high pressure sodium street lights. And the orange bar represents two sites that were lit with older LPS or low pressure sodium lights. You'll notice that with the exception of two sites, all sites recorded fewer caterpillars at lit sites than unlit sites. So what about the different type of lighting? Did this have an effect? Sodium street lighting produces a yellow-orange light. It is an older technology which is rapidly being replaced with more modern and brighter LED lighting. Low-pressure sodium lights have been around since the 1930s, but were commonly used after World War II, and their manufacture ceased in 2017 due to falling demand. High-pressure sodium began to appear in the UK in the late 1960s. Modern LED streetlights were introduced in the UK in 2011. 
LED lights produce a brighter white light. They are more energy efficient and have been popular due to the reduced energy consumption, which helps the climate crisis and saves money. However, this study has revealed that LED lighting has a bigger impact on biodiversity, with fewer caterpillars and habitat areas lit by LED lights than those lit by sodium lights. In fact, the effect on caterpillar populations at lit sites was calculated as non-significant in the areas lit by LPS street lights. The sites lit by HPS lights had a mixed result. It affected caterpillar abundance in grass margins far more than those in hedgerows. But the effect of LED lighting was significant at all locations. This result is somewhat surprising. LED lighting has been shown to attract similar numbers of, or even slightly fewer moths than sodium lamps. So it might be expected that LED lights would be less damaging to moth populations. But as the study shows, that just isn't the case. So how exactly does street lighting affect moth populations? Well, the authors of this paper suggest several reasons. Allen has been shown to disrupt moth behaviour, and so they may lay fewer eggs. Daytime predators and parasoids may be more active in lit areas at night. Lighting can also affect the growth of plants that caterpillars feed on. HBS lighting has been shown to cause grasses to grow physically tougher and therefore more difficult to feed on. So how detrimental is the effect of street lighting across the country or indeed globally? Well, this study admits that only a small portion of land is covered by street lights. It's been estimated that only around 3.2% of the United Kingdom is affected by streetlights. The study concludes that the effect of direct illumination by streetlights has probably been a minor contributor to long-term national moth declines. However, these results show that it can be a very substantial local factor. With the increasing amount of Allen, these effects could become more substantial in the future. But at a local level, these results are significant. For example, in the spring, songbirds, such as tits, rely heavily on caterpillars to feed their young. These bird species have a small foraging range, so a local reduction in their food supply, remember this is a drop of up to 50%, could have a dramatic effect on these populations of bird species. So with the pronounced effects that LED lights have, it is worrying that street lighting is shifting away from sodium lamps towards these brighter, whiter lights. But there is good news. LEDs can be easily modified, more so than sodium lamps, by adjusting their intensity and using different colours. This provides us with the opportunity to minimise the negative impacts that Alan has on insect populations and their associated ecosystems. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. Except for you, Alan. No one likes you. Could I please ask you to do a favour? Videos like this one tend not to perform so well on my channel, so since you made it this far, please do hit that like button and subscribe, and why not leave me a comment too? You have no idea how much that really helps me out, and I really appreciate it too. Well, I hope you found this one interesting. I'll leave a link to the original study in the description. Uh, do give it a read, it goes into much more depth than what I've covered here. And I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.